Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Let's have an update on how we're getting on the site. So here we are. We started bricklaying four weeks ago today. So four weeks ago, there was nothing here, just the foundations that we're in. Uh, we've made really good progress. Um, we've had no rain, so it's been pretty good. We had a few showers at night time, which we tend to get here. We don't really get much rain in the daytime, um, but we've had no time where we've not been able to work uh, and that's made a big difference. I've also had some help from um, a few of my mentees who are on my Property Developers Academy. So Paul and Sean, they came down for a day. Um, they were working on some block work in here. That's been a great help. Uh, I've had Frank Garvey from My Prospect Homes. He's been down here. Uh, I think Frank come down for six days. He brought his grandson Harley for a few days as well. Um, that's, that's been a really good help. I mean, he come from Manchester down here near Lincolnshire and um, stayed down here. Uh, and yeah, it's a great commitment. It's been good to spend a few days with Frank. 64 year old bricklayer, laying bricks as fit as any 18 year old. And um, pleasure to spend some time with him and, and my boys as well. Uh, and it's just allowed us to get on really, really well. I also had Dave, who uh, I did my apprenticeship with. Um, he called me up just a couple of days before we started uh, and just asked me if we'd got any work because he's in between sites. So he came and helped us. Um, he was here when Frank was here. Uh, and together between us, you know, we've managed to get to this stage in, in four weeks exactly today. So fantastic progress. Um, we'll show you around. One of the problems we had, because you do get a few problems as a developer, was the scaffold company let me down um, two days before they were due to do the first lift. So we've got all the brickwork up. We had everything scheduled in, joists, etc., etc. And they just unfortunately said, look, we're, we're on site. We can't get away from site. We can't do any um, private jobs, as they call it. Um, so sort of small jobs like this. Um, so they let us down last minute. Luckily, my wife found another scaffolder um, who you know, managed to pull out all the stops and come two days later. So great effort from them. And that's a company called Rick Henry in, uh, in Spalding. They're really, really good. And um, they've just been really good. Good communication. Did what they say they were going to do. They put four guys on here, got it all done in a, in a day and a bit. Uh, and then they came and did the second lift, bang on time as well. And they were short staffed actually, but they pulled out all the stops and got it done in a, in a day. Um, and we carried on with the block work upstairs, which meant that we, again, we had no stoppage time while the scaffolders were working. But no, it's gone really, really well. Um, the thing I like when the weather's good is you can see that the brickwork is just really clean. You know, I've got some people that end up getting like, companies in to pressure wash all their brickwork. It's just not how we work. We just like to keep everything nice and clean as we go in. You'll notice here where the scaffold lift is, some brick layers where they keep dropping all the mortar, there's all splash marks up here. You, you don't get that on our brickwork. We keep the scaffold walls clean. We don't really drop much muck um, because it just makes a big difference when that scaffold's down. You know, you've got one, jump, one chance to do the brickwork and um, you just want to be doing it right. Another key thing is pointing under these lintels. Because when you're on the scaffold, um, it's sort of at your waist height. Not many bricklayers get down on their knees and, and point up. They just literally run their finger along it, run the brush. Um, for me, that's just not good. I like to see those nice and clean and pointed nice uh, and these ones have been. But yeah, it's looking good. <clears throat> um, the other thing we did was we, we managed to get the joists on. So me and my son did those, all using posi joists. Um, they're just great for, <clears throat> you know, when the electrics and plumbing goes in, very easy for put the services in. Um, electricians just have to be careful that they're not tugging on the wires too much, uh, and they strip the strip the coating off and catch the wires on those on those metal uh, bracings. So they all went in no problems. Um, the, the company that delivers those to site, they didn't deliver any battens. Um, so I was on the phone straight away. I said, "Look, I've got the joist. That's great. Where's all my battens? All my noggins?" And within 45 minutes, they managed to get some out. So that was great. I mean, one of those, one of the benefits there is, you know, using a company that's local to you. And if there's a problem, they can come and, um, you know, fix that problem pretty quick. Or we could have gone and got in the van and took the trailer and gone and got those noggins ourselves and gone to the merchants or, or rectified it pretty quick and not really caused too many delays on site. So it's great to use people that are probably cheaper sometimes, but can they solve that problem? Um, being too far away if there is a problem and, and you know there are problems on sites so in this room this is going to be the study and the utility and there's going to be a dividing wall just, just through here on this wall um, show stud work this is the only stud work in the house and we had to build this little pillar here so it's, it's about what 300 mil something like that 
uh, and eventually there'll be a cupboard out the back. So very, very fragile to build. And it did show two small lintels on here. Um, now, I personally think that would have been too fragile. Certainly to build it, <clears throat> we did have to put a bit of bracing up here while I was building this pillar, let it, let it set. And then we take that bracing away. So what we did, we just put a big, you can see a big 225 mil box lintel across there. That just gives this pillar a lot more stability, you know, because the joists are sitting on that. Uh, and that's just going to eliminate any movement, any cracks within that while we're, you know, while we're building out the rest of the house. Um, I mean, the other thing we might do is there's, there's a back of a cupboard here, a dividing wall for there. We may just do them out, out of blocks rather than um, rather than stood work. You know, there's no weight in these blocks; they're only lightweight anyway. Uh, and again, just just for stability, avoiding the cracks, we can put a wall starter up there and fix those. Uh, I just think it would do a better job. So this is where our stairs is going to go up. That's all cut out ready. And um, we're going to put some covering around there just so that people can't fall down there when we get back on site on Monday. And this is separate lounge. So the other thing we've done, I mean, we did run out of briquettes, but we've just used facing bricks in there. They're better for putting the joists on because they've got frog. If we lay them frog down, it just stops them sliding off the cement. When you start using the briquettes, they just fall off so easy. They just don't stick. Um, you know, they stick when they've got weight on top, but when they are on top of the wall like that, they will just easily get knocked off and slide off. And a lot of those bricks will be loose when the joists go on. So we do prefer to use bricks um, to put our joists on rather than briquettes. So if you just look around all the joists up there, you can see how we've pointed all around those joists. Now that's essential for when you do like the air test. You know, if you've got any leakages behind the plasterboard, um, that's going to go up there and it's going to start leaking through there and then you've got real problems. So, you know, for, the, for those of you that are looking to develop or build your own house or have builders in, make sure your brick layers point around those joists because um, that's a big problem if it's, if it's not done properly. The other thing we, we do as we build, once we start building lintels that are sort of over about six foot, we'll just put a temporary um, timber support in the middle. You can see how that's just propped up. Because even though they're steel, they can bow while you're building them in. And you know, then your lintel's just got probably maybe a 10 mil bow. Now these are probably gonna have aluminium bifolds in here and you haven't got any tolerance with aluminium. You know, so you've got to make sure they're bang on and, and you know, you don't want to bow in the lintel anyway. So we'll just put a little support up there just while we're brick laying. Once that's done, we'll take that away, but it means our lintels are 100% straight. <clears throat> so I just mentioned we may have bifolds on here instead of um, UPVC. So yesterday, me and my son stood here. I know we've got the forklift in the way, but this is a view from the lounge. And then also that's the view from the lounge. This is like a sun lounge, there is a separate lounge. But we sat here yesterday and we said, oh, you know, do we, do we think it's really better having bifolds where they fully open or French doors where they, you know, they swing back and there's going to be, there'll be a, a sort of post down there where there's a side panel on the glass. So I think we're going to go for bifolds. It's going to cost us another £3,000 for that. But there's a couple of things there. One is those doors will open up and, and really let the garden feel like it's, you know, you're outside living. The second one is this is south facing and it gets, it's going to get hot and UPVC in a south facing elevation on the French doors can be an issue where they will drop just because they will expand uh, uh, and contract with the heat and the cold. With aluminium, you just mitigate that problem. Uh, you know, aluminium is where it is, it, it's millimetre perfect and it just stays there regardless of the temperature. So I think we're going to pay the extra money uh, and do that. One, it's going to be a better sales feature. Two, we're not going to get any issues, you know, once the property is sold and someone's moved in. Um, the last thing we want is our window guy having to keep coming back every three or four weeks just to, you know, tow and heal the doors just because they've dropped a few mil and then in the winter there's a big gap so he's got to come back and do it again. So extra money but, you know, at the end of the day you want to build things right uh, and get them done. So we've gone for this sort of cavity filled with rock wall bats. Um, we set this back just slightly because in here will be a... Um, a plastic thing called Firmabate, which seals the cavity before you put your windows in. And that insulation just needs to be back about 40 mil. So if it's flush, sometimes it can be a bit of a pain fitting that insulation. You can see here that all our halves are nicely cut. Some brickies, you know, are cutting these halves and they're in here and in and they're all gonna be cut back. And when you're cutting them back, that can damage the brickwork. So just make sure that they're nice and 
nice and straight, so you can see down there, all nice equal halves. Now one thing we did get was, when we did the foundations, we got a lot of people saying, oh, how come there's no damp proof membrane in the floor? So you can see we've concreted the oversight. Uh, and we normally put it on top. And then what we do is we put damp proof membrane, we build this into the brickwork, we lift this up, that goes all the way up. We put, put the polythene under, tuck that back down, seal it with duct tape, and then we put our insulation on, then we'll put our underfloor heating with our flow screen on. So that's the way we like to do it. It's a far better way of doing it because when you're putting the polythene in, like building, when you're trying to get polythene over like these corners like here, it just tears anyway. You know, and that's where you're gonna get the damp. So the way we do it is we never get any damp issues because we seal it from above rather than the polythene being um, sort of punctured on these corners of the brickwork as the weight of the concrete goes on. You know, you can't bend the, the polythene around the corners um, but this way we can cut it and fold it and tape it all up, seal it all up properly. Uh, and again, it's just belt and braces, just the way we like to do things because we don't want any problems later on once the homeowner moves in. So, let's have a quick look around the outside. So as you can see, our site's pretty tidy. We haven't got any, any materials out here. This is what's left of 20 ton sand. That's gonna be enough to do the gables. One thing is we have built the garage already. So that's already up, ready to put wall plates on, ready for the roof. And that in the garage, it's all done. All pointed up nicely. Lintel's all on. We've still got the dreaded pole. So it still sits in the middle of the garage. I did get an email yesterday from Openreach. So look, the equipment is up there see that that's their equipment up there i did get an email from them yesterday saying that they've cancelled the job so i've got to find out what's going on with that today either way this pole is coming down when it's ready for the roof whether we have to do it or they're going to do it on time like they should do like, like they've been paid to do it um but i'll keep you updated on that one as i say you always get problems you've just got to go and solve them and figure it out uh, and that's what you get paid handsomely to do so we've got the last of our bricks and blocks here, ready for the gate. We've got a decent sized loading bay out the side rather than at the front, just because it allows us to come in from the front of the road and just lift our stuff up safely, um, rather than driving on all the mud and making a mess. I mean, like I say, luckily it's been dry, um, but if it had been raining and, and we hadn't got all the hardcore in, then yeah, it's just making a mess and it's just not a nice place to work. But yeah, the scaffolders have done a great job. So, having a decent loading bay like that's really helped. So, let's go upstairs and we'll show you around. With these gates on these scaffolds, they can sometimes be more of a pain than without, because watch this when it goes back. They're like a guillotine. They're so tightly sprung that uh, they're quite hard to push on sometimes. Right, okay, so we're just waiting for the next scaffold lift. That's gonna be done uh, next week. These are the holes that we put in for the scaffold and they follow on from the poles below. So they slide the scaffold in there. We prefer to put them in the bed joints rather than these joints, rather than the perps, just because when they're pointed, they're just basically invisible. But sometimes when the brickies build these in, they start leaving like a 40 mil gap instead of a, a sort of 10 mil joint. The other thing we've gone for is all detail work. So you can see that goes all the way around. All nicely raped out. <clears throat> so we're gonna screw our guttering straight onto this brickwork. So no fascia and soffits. When this saves money, it's maintenance free because you know you don't get faces and soffits up here they're not going to go black and dusty um it's just a nice way to do it i think if you can see the farmhouse over there doesn't have faces and soffits and yeah there's an old like a garage thing that's got detailed brickwork and no faces and soffits also so we're, we're in keeping with the area this is how we do them anyway we do them on all of our houses like this, detailed brickwork. 
Now, it just looks nice, you know. So, we was talking about the lintels. You can see here, look, how neat we, we clean these off. Our wee poles are level with the bottom of the soldiers, not down here where some bricklayers put them, so they stick out. So you can see how the wee poles sit at the bottom of the brick. Okay, nice and clean. <clears throat> All in there properly, in the proper place. We also, you can see, we bed our lintels on. Some bricklayers don't bed the lintels on, they just stick them straight on the brickwork. So we do bed them on, that's the way to do it properly. Just little things, but, you know, there again. Wee poles level with the bottom of the brick, not stick, not sitting down here on the lintel. And then the other thing is, you should have a wee pole past here, where your cavity tray tucks up in case any water gets in there. Water never gets in there, but that is the right way to do them. So yeah, all the insulation's in. All done properly. All lintels bedded on. <coughs> Scaffold nice and clean. All swept off. You know, ready to, ready for the scaffolders to come in. There's, there's nothing worse than being full of crap. You know, if you want people to do a good job for you and come up and turn up on time and, and do things properly, then just, you know, think about the next trade. So here's our cavity tray. That'll be built in on the block work. This is a gable end, so that one's going to be built up there. And then, like I say, here's our scaffold holes that marry up with the poles below. So it just means their job's really, really easy. It means all the boards are just going to go in the same place once they're up. And you can see in here, it's quite a big space. There's a stairwell that we're going to block up later. We've just got a few blocks in here left just to lift up. Um, we've got our wall plate on there. We put some bricks on there just to stop it lifting. We also put some screws in the bottom of the wall plate um, when we bed it on so that when that cement sets, the screws hold that plate in stops it all sliding off there will be some straps on there um but it just means that that wall plate bed stays in the bed while it sets so if we look on here you might be able to see this so we've got weep holes in here because this is where our garage roof's going to come and our cavity tray is built in and you can see they're all in line down there at the same angle of where the garage roof will be so this is where the garage is you can see that and then those cavity trays have been built in okay again look wee poles lintels bedded on all done properly and nice detail work all the way around so i did that the other day quite a lot of work actually all the detail work all the soldiers front back uh, and around this side but we had to get done because um, rain's forecast for tomorrow. I'm not to say it's all ready for scaffolding now. And um, we're going to go fishing for a week. We're gonna, me and my son are going fishing for a week in France. And then when we come back, we're going to be putting the, uh, the trusses on. I've got a couple of guys again, someone from our retreat, someone from my academy is going to come down, spend the day with us. We're going to put the trusses on and we're just going to talk about property developing. And um, they've both got projects, so we can talk about those projects and how we can help those get to this stage and um, without any issues if there's any issues we can talk about how we're going to mitigate them or solve them problems and move them forward to making um you know life-changing money through property development because that's what we do uh, and we also help a lot of people do that uh, on the same basis as well so if you've got any comments about the build put them below as always always get back to you it's me personally that answers those questions um if this is the sort of thing that you'd like to do but, you know change what you're doing maybe you're a tradesman watching this video and you want to get into doing your own developments this is where i suggest you start just building one house um there's way over 100 grand profit in something like this it's going to take us about four and a half months to build um you know it's not a long not a long thing building one house it's it's fairly easy it's just a it's just a process to follow and, and you know anyone can do this because you know it's just a process you know i'm, I'm a bricklayer by trade but if, if you wasn't a bricklayer you just go and get a gang of bricklayers in um, to do this work for you it's not a problem i don't normally build these anyway i just decided to build this one because my son's asked me to but normally we've got gangs of bricklayers that come in and do this work you know so it's a great um it's a great strategy for leverage you know you can go on holiday while the bricklayers are here laying the bricks in the cold and the wet um, and that, that's the beauty of property development you don't ha actually have to build this thing physically yourself and i have got people that i've trained and mentored that are doing projects bigger than this 
um, you know, no experience, no money. You know, there's plenty of money out there. You can find the money. So we, we teach you how to do all that. But if this is the sort of thing you fancy doing, um, there's links in the comments where you can do an online training or you can come to one of our three day live events. Uh, those events always sell out, um, but you can come along. We'll teach you the whole process uh, and then you can be doing stuff like this pretty quick. We've got a hot, really high success rate of people coming in through the training and now doing developments. Um, you know, within just two or three months, they've gone out, found deals, raising the funding, uh, and then over, another two or three months' time, they're on site and actually getting away and, and start building things like this. So, you know, 12 to 18 months, it could be life-changing, could have life-changing money in your bank. And, um, yeah, you could be working for yourself rather than working for other people, working for other customers, doing your own thing, and um, creating a legacy like I want to. So... Any comments, in, put them in the comments below uh, and I'll get back to you. Follow us on the social medias, like and subscribe the channel, share this if there's anybody out there watching that you might feel it, it could be of interest for them as well. And we'll catch you on the next video very soon.